Hi everyone. In this episode, we're going to be following up our talk of attributive adjectives with a discussion of predicate adjectives. So what we, we had the example last time, the red dog versus the dog is red. So red was describing the dog, and this was an incomplete sentence, and we called this attributive. And then we had the dog is red, which was predicate. We could put a final period at this and call it a complete sentence. And that's because this is acted as a linking kernel, as we call it, the linking the kernel. When I say that, I mean the kind of essence of the sentence, uh, what's going on. And that links A, the dog, to be an attribute about that dog. Of course, we call this an attributive. This is a predicate here. Uh, the dog, subject, verb, predicate, red. So when we saw, uh, if we go back to our example of the good fruit, we could do this in a number of ways. We could have hoy, kaloi, krapoi, the good fruit, just as in English. That was option number one. Then we also had karpoi, sorry, make that grave, hoy, kaloi, Again, meaning some fruit, the good kind, <laughs> also known as just good fruit, not the good, this is the good fruit, this is just good fruit. And then finally, we could double up that article, hoy carpoi, hoy caloi. And then we have here the fruit, the good fruit. So the good fruit overall. So the good fruit, good fruit, the good fruit. And we also had our kind of fourth options where we were just really riding roughshod and saying, well, let's just not even use articles kaloi carpoi or even carpoi kaloi. And those, you know, could be attributive uses. Uh, good fruit, good fruit. Again, not the good fruit, just good fruit broadly speaking. Now we need to get to when this happens, when we have a predicate. And what a predicate needs is a linking verb. And when I say linking, this is like, in a certain sense, a conjunction. It's saying A is somehow related to B on an equivalence status. It doesn't, it's A isn't doing something to B, A isn't receiving B, A isn't manipulating B. A and B are somehow connected existentially. So linking verbs can be a lot of things. We've got the verb in English, to be, which, which does most things, but then these can also, th this is truly existential, <laughs> that it is something else, uh, but there can be kind of perceptions of e existence uh, that also form these linking kernels. So this is where, you know, it seems to be somewhere. It looks like something else. It becomes something else. So this is a sort of existential that's put over time. It's made diachronic. Uh, we have the same item that's becoming something else. These are all linking verbs, and what they will do is take a predicate use of the adjective. The man is becoming red with anger. Both man and red can be in the nominative, and that's where we're going to get this nominative use of the article. Well, good. Let's scroll on down and see if we can tackle some examples. So, sure, we'll call this magenta B, and we can see what we can do. I'm going to follow Shelmerdine's examples, because we might as well. So her first example is hologos, the word, and then simply, let me tame my eraser here, it's too big for its britches, hologos, that was the same mistake I did, I need to write a non-final sigma, and then sophos. So in Greek, this is sufficient. The word is wise. Now that's a little frustrating because we don't have a verb is in Greek here. We just have a nominative subject and a nominative, both masculine, article, or not article, uh, adjective. This is masculine because adjectives need to agree 
So adjectives always agree um, with their, what I'll call their referent, and that's, that's their noun, basically, in case, number, and gender. So singular, check, case, nominative, check, and gender, masculine, check. Good. This is why when we learn those three categories of, and we have a big chart of all the uh, different forms that these uh, adjectives could take, we needed all of them because we needed to be able to always pair with case number gender. We couldn't leave any of that out. So good. But, so, but still, this just means the word wise. Well, how do we know that this isn't attributive? This is predicate the predicate use of the adjective. So why not attributive? Well, I gave the secret away in the end of the last lesson. The article here is being paired with the noun, while the adjective over here has no article. This is classic predicate well, this is the only way. This is how the predicate works. We have the article with the noun, and the adjective just sits out there without it. This is how we know that this means the word is wise. Now, of course, the Greeks did have a linking verb that they could express, and it's a enclitic verb, which we'll get to, well, later on in this chapter in section four. Uh, but we can just kind of understand that this is a, a gapped form. And when I say gapped, I'm writing in a dyslexic mode today. When I say gapped, I mean overlooked, maybe. It's left out because native speakers would understand that, well, that's obviously what you mean. So the word is wise, and they didn't need to put this st or st in if it's at the end of the sentence. Again, we'll get to how to form this and what to do here. And clinics are a little bit complicated. It's very easy, but it's something that we haven't seen yet. So we can scroll down and rewrite what we just had. So ha logos sophos. And then again, just kind of bracketed there, gapped Eston. But Greeks didn't need that. They could just finish it right up here. And then we could also invert this word order. Sophos. Ha, logos. And again, Estin is there somewhere. Maybe we could imagine that it's it's gapped here. Wise is the word. Uh, totally unexpressed, uh, but why do we know it's predicative? Well, the definite article precedes the noun, not the adjective. We can also do this, so that this is with adjectives, but Adjectives, what, well, what do adjectives do? They tell us more about the noun. Well, what else can do that that's not specifically an adjective? Well, we have possessive genitives, right? And then we say uh, the goddess of the city or whatever. That of the city is telling us more about the goddess. We're going to have the same sort of thing in practice. Uh, so we had already had attributive use of the possessive genitive. Now let's make it a predicate use. So the example Shelmerdine uses is ha hippos, the horse. And then we want to say is of the general. So then we have sd. Again, don't mind the accents. Just, just trust me on this one. We'll get there in a, really soon. Tu strategu. Sorry, then wander over there, but it was running out of space. So the horse is of the general. It is the general's horse. Uh, that's what we're expressing here. It's not the horse of the general stopped the army or whatever. This is a full sentence. We can put a full stop here because we have a verb, even if in Greek they didn't need to express it. So you could really just have a word, a full sentence in Greek without ever saying the verb. One reason that they could get away with this is the use of cases. Here, with everything in the nominative, you know that sophos has to be in some equivalence relationship with logos. Um, this allows us to gap here. Here, also, if you just have a full stop, 
the horse of the gen general, you can put this kind of meaning together. It's pretty clear. In a non-case language, in a non-inflected language, that's a little bit trickier. So Greek is just flexing its, uh, its inflected muscle here. So we can also do this um, with so we have possessive general or genitive here. Uh, we could also do this with prepositional phrases, where we, we could do a sandwich, the trees on the island uh, are dear to the goddess or whatever, but we could just say there are trees on the island. So that's Shelmerdine's next example, Todd Dendra, a nice neuter plural, and then on the island. Again, remember what's going on with neso. That's nesos, a nice second declension noun, but unlike most second declension nouns, it's actually feminine. So feminine article, a somewhat masculine looking second declension ending. So the trees on the island, and then the kind of thing that's left out here that we don't really need to worry about now is estin. The trees are on the island. Good. It's not a bear island. There are a lot of Greek islands without trees these days. But back in the day, or at some point, these islands might have had trees. So there are trees. There exist kind of an existential use of the verb to be. There are trees on the island. So, so this is good. This is a way that we've seen adjectives and then also possessive genitives and then also prepositional phrases working in this um, predicate way. But then we also have nouns that can themselves be predicate when we want to say that, you know, well, first we could do a name. We could do, uh, well, let me get the right vowel here. So, Demosthenes, Demosthenes, um, and then Ha Strategos. Because Demosthenes was a general, or at least there was a Demosthenes who was a general in the Peloponnesian War. This isn't the uh, orator of the fourth century. Um, but, but then we could also, we, we don't even need to do this with a proper name. Let's get a different color to spice things up. We could say the soldier. Again, this is Shelmerdine's example. Hall Stratiotes. First declension, but masculine. And then is a poet. Poetes. That's all you need to say. The soldier is a poet. We could also shake this up and say poet is the soldier. In both cases, the English translation, we use what has the article as the proper subject. So in both, what, you know, we have two ways of expressing what in English we have to express one way. The soldier is a poet. This is our English subject with the article. All right. Uh, but then we also could, if we, so we're saying now, the poet here without an article is a somewhat, um, it's, it's almost an adjective, it's a description. What kind of work does the poet, or does the soldier do? What's he do in his spare time? Well, he's a poet, a poet. But then let's say we're talking about a certain poet and a certain soldier, uh, and we wanna say the soldier is the poet. Hall stratiotes, hall poetes. And then again, gapped in here is just this form of estin. But we don't need to worry about it. This is the soldier is the poet. And for our English translation, when both nouns, both the subject and then the predicate, have the article, we follow the Greek word order. We want to say the soldier is a poet in this case. Uh, if we were to reverse the word order in Greek, we'd also reverse the word order in English. So back scrolling up here, 
We could express this hol stratiotes poetes or poetes, hol stratiotes, both meant the soldier is a poet, and we knew the soldier was going to be the subject of our English sentence because it had the article in both cases. Here, when both nouns have an article, we need to follow word order. This is where we have to pay attention. The soldier is the poet. Well, good. I hope that was clear. This distinction between predicate and attributive is a little tricky, especially when I'm using these linking verbs that we haven't yet learned. Well, the good news is in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about how enclitics work, which will explain some of these accentuation rules. And then finally, also how to actually conjugate the form of to be in the present tense. That's going to be lesson 7.5. Uh, so join you there and have a good one. Take care.